it's been over a year and a half of since the launch of brand Datsun in India. And uh, this brand has its share of learnings in the market and it's now looking at expanding in other markets across the globe as well. But to tell us more about the plans and how uh, brand Datsun will intend to grow in India, we have with us the global head of Datsun, Vincent Kobe. Vincent, always a pleasure talking to you. Thanks for spending your time. Thanks very much, it's a pleasure. Uh, first of all, how would you define the journey so far for Datsun? I think the journey of Datsun in India started, as we all know, in March 2014. We launched the first car of Datsun Go, then maybe eight months later, we launched the second car, Datsun Go Plus. I think it's been, a, as you said, a road full of learnings and full of building a foundation. So on the, on the very strong and positive side for me, we had a very good reception to the cars. I think the uh, superior performance of a car in many dimensions from space to power to braking to dynamic safety to comfort was recognized. And the second and perhaps the most important part for me is we have a very, very high customer satisfaction. So the people who we managed to convince in trying out this new brand are actually very satisfied with the products they get. Moving forward, we need to continue expanding, accelerating, learning the complexities and the, the key drivers of India. And we need to, from this foundation, build a strong house of a brand. And as you mentioned, introduce a third brother or sister in the family. Great. And also it had its, um, if one were to ask you a very pointed question, <clears throat> are you happy with the kind of sales volumes that uh, Datsun has received? Perhaps the answer would be no, right? I think the reality is we would have loved to sell more, okay? But I think we should also be cognizant of the fact that the brand is not built over a couple of months. Uh, we are 18 months into the market and we are, that is what is very meaningful for me, we are the third player in this B hatchback segment. Obviously much smaller than the other two, but it means we are the only one who has managed to actually carve a space for itself in an extremely conservative until now and meaningful segment which is the hatchback of India. Now if you look at the market of India as a whole, what is it that uh, as an executive of a global automotive OEM that still kind of you, are you search for answers? There's a lot of um, very complex challenges in the Indian market. Obviously the diversity from one part of India to the other. Uh, the uh, variety of demands from the customer, uh, you know, Affordability is one criteria, fuel economy is another, but modernity, innovation and features is also a fundamental criteria. So this is a, a tough equation to perfectly master. Most recently, one of the things which I don't have an answer for is this market is growing. I mean, it's one of the fastest growing markets in the world. It's growing faster than China. But nearly only one brand grows and that is the dominant player. And this is kind of uh, counterintuitive. So I think the deep inside the Indian market, the key drivers of purchase are complex, they're deeply rooted, and they're slow to change. And I think one of these is the fact that word of mouth and friends and family are the key influencers in the purchase decision. So that gives us a direction, but that also must give us patience because the Indian market is a slow construction that I'm quite sure is a very loyal and rewarding market as we move forward. So is that the constituency, with the constituency of friends and family members of the actual customer that you will be more focusing on now to kind of, con to kind of educate them and bring them, yeah, make them pro that sense? That's why I was mentioning one of my great satisfaction is customer satisfaction. Because, you know, we keep on saying that when you have a satisfied customer, you have somebody who is going to become your ambassador. It's going to be referring your brand to new friends and families. If you have a dissatisfied customer, the impact of that customer is actually 10 times more than one of a satisfied customer. So we really need to aim for 95 plus 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 uh, customer satisfaction. And I think with that one, we are there, which for me is one of the very good signs of the last 18 months. And also while overall, may maybe the uh, the brand has not grown in terms in the market as you would have expected, but there are certain pockets which you have mentioned yeah. have encouraged you, right? Like in the south and the yeah. northeast, yeah. and in Nepal. Do you see? So the, the, does did Nepal, by by the way, take you by surprise? I mean, you know, clearly we introduced that in Nepal maybe three weeks before the earthquake, so it's a very particular situation. 
Um, but what is very interesting for me is when we start this virtual circle, we can actually get traction quite quickly. And the examples you mentioned are completely different from each other. Uh, we had quite good success in the state of Kerala because there is some brand awareness in that state. And based on this, the product resonated better, the uh, conversion of customers was better, and our sales results have been quite good. If you look at Assam, for completely different reasons, we're actually having quite good results in Assam because our product performance is superior. Suspension, chassis, engine power. So we, were, we managed to crack this um, brand duopoly very quickly in Assam because of super, superior product performance. I think Nepal, there was no such brand legacy in Nepal. And again, the superior product performance did the, uh, the work. So I think we need to learn from this. We need to be able to demonstrate the product capability. And to be clear, we've made uh, test driving the car a mandatory element of every customer walking in the, any Datsun showroom in the country because the product speaks for itself. I mean, it's, you know, it is Japanese rooted, it is a very strong, um, capable engineering, and it's a very sincere product. So you need to drive it to, to feel that's all. And um, we can actually build a better understanding of a brand and its history. That's also one of the direction where we are going. But I think that if we reach a brand trust, and if we manage to get the product being demonstrated in the hands of the customers, then we have good foundations to start this virtual, sorry, virtuous circle. And also, uh, like uh, March 2016 would be the second anniversary of the yeah. brand. India being the first market where it was relaunched. Yeah. Uh, that could be a good occasion to have your next introduction. Yes, we, uh, you know, when we uh, brought Datsun to India, we said it's not a car, it's a lineup. And the way we committed is by saying we launched three cars within three years. Because of the dynamism of India, because of the potential of India, we wanted to make sure that India would be the best serve of the free market. So we'll complete our free car lineup within barely two years and not three. So yes, somewhere in March next year, we'll be uh, launching a new car. That's great. And also uh, in terms of the markets you're talking about, uh, you have also mentioned that the the matured markets, I mean, or the, 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 mar the traditional markets are unli unlikely to be the growth drivers, while in absolute mm. volume they may be big. But uh, uh, given that the, that's the situation and it's likely to be in the future, it's going to change even further. Mm. Uh, which are the new markets that the uh, brand Datsun would be uh, focused yeah. on? You know, first, if we look from, the, uh, from a global perspective, uh, the car market worldwide is growing from 50 to 100 million in 20 years. So where does those 50 come from? Okay, Nearly 15 of them, a bit more than 15, come from China. Okay, But India will represent three to four of those 15. Then Indonesia will represent probably at least one. ASEAN in total might be two to three. But the, the biggest drivers next to those three pockets of growth is Africa. Africa you know, we keep on saying that the middle class of Africa is the same size as the middle class of India. But that's not visible today in the car market. And the next uh, big opportunity will be Latin America and probably Middle East. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of discussion around Iran as we speak, but there's a lot of countries in the Middle East which also have strong growth potential. So India, Indonesia, Russia are strong markets today. Uh, Africa is the, the visible next frontier, and then there's other frontiers as we and, look and when forward. And looking at this, uh, embarking on this next phase of uh, market introductions for mm. Datsun? You know, as I said uh, a bit earlier when we talked, uh, I think we, we always have the same approach as Datsun, which is we start from a country, then we look at the customer, then we look at the ideal product, then we define the solution. We need to make sure that we are ready. We are ready to provide the right product at the right price and cost of ownership. And we are ready to actually deliver a good brand experience. We, we don't want to run quicker than we walk or before we walk. And I think we are uh, learning a lot of things being in India, Indonesia and Russia. I think we need to understand those new frontiers very well.
Some of them are quite challenging. Africa is the uh, perfect example. So we will make sure that when we come, we come with proper answer that answer the uh, the dreams of this emerging middle class. And in terms of the brand positioning, uh, is it absolutely clear that you will not kind of break the ceiling of say five hundred or six hundred thousand rupee? Uh, I, I don't think it's a it's a price boundary. I think it's a customer boundary. But at the same uh, time, the acquisition cost also yeah, no, kind of reflects the positioning, right? Today, yes. Today, yes. Uh, what I'm trying to say here is we see in India a vast tranche of a population accessing what we call middle class, what I call the luxury of choice, what I call the investment into the future. Um, those customers today uh, buy a three to five lakh car, usually a compact hatchback, and are very concerned about cost of ownership and fuel economy and maintenance cost. Five, ten years down the road, those customers will still be a very dynamic engine of Indian growth, but they will have changed family stage, they will have changed their purchasing patterns, but they might not decide to opt for a global model being sold at seven lakh. They might just want a different car. So today, yes, the brands are positioned partly by their selling price, but I think tomorrow, they will be positioned through their customer types okay. and the customers will evolve. If you, uh, if you wish, you could look at what has been happening in the last 20 years in China. It's extremely interesting. It started like this and it's currently something like this where you actually have two different type of customers who are very comfortable in buying a certain type of car at a certain type of price. Right. Probably the joint venture brand plus an exactly. brand. Exactly. And I think India will have its own take at this evolution, but that evolution will come. So there could be a day perhaps where a global Nissan model and a Datsun market specific model could play in the same, uh, roughly in the same price. Yes, but they will be different. Yeah, they would have They would own, offer own a different exactly. experience. In terms of the acquisition cost, they may be the same. Yeah, that's possible. Have a totally different uh, personality. And on that note, uh, thank you very much, Vincent, and all the best with the uh, brand Datsun and uh, and wishing you in advance for the, for the second anniversary of Thank Brand Datsun in India and uh, best wishes for the expansion. Thank you very much. Yeah. Pleasure having you here. There you are. And uh, Vincent really is sharing with us about how uh, what the learnings of Brand Datsun and how uh, Datsun is going, uh, what the future of Brand Datsun could be in India as well as in other new markets across the world. Thank you for watching.